come from a family that uh, has military service as part of an unspoken tradition. My father served in the Army, and both my grandfathers did. Uh, so, so there was a kind of precedent for that. Um, you know, I, I, I was uh, harmless, but, uh, uh, you know, a borderline juvenile delinquent when I was in high school. So, you know, my, my prospects seem rather limited after I graduated. So it was kind of an opportunity for me to, uh, you know, to see a different part of the world, get some, get some life experience. And, you know, I, I suppose I was idealistic and, and naive as 17 year olds are want to be. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't, um, I don't think it was a shocking choice for the people who were close to me. Uh, looking back on it, it's sort of surprising seeing how things ended up. Yeah. Yeah. You say you're idealistic, so there was a certain amount, rather than just it being about your family and ancestry. No, I mean, I wasn't a, <clears throat> kind of a rah-rah patriot, that kind of a person, but I, you know, I'd have always been interested in history and growing up in Virginia, which they call the mother of presidents, you know, I, I, I felt very strongly in the ideals um, that the United States was founded on, um, you know, freedom and, and, and justice and liberty and, and the kind of things that are enshrined in the uh, first ten amendments of the Constitution, they, they actually meant something to me even as a, as a kid and I felt like uh, somehow serving that was, was uh, an honorable thing to do. Uh, I discovered later that uh, very often you're serving other interests, uh, but that's that was part of the reason I, I felt like it was uh, an honorable choice. Probably because I'm a I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a poet and I'm somebody who's interested in poetry. It actually started with an image. The, the, the image that closes the book, in fact, was the first, you know, uh, and that was more or less the first scene. I don't know if it was the first scene that I wrote, but um, it was the first thing that was clear to me in my mind. Uh, so I kind of worked backwards, really. Um, I thought about how these people would arrive at, uh, you know, at this point in time. And I started asking questions about who they were you know, what their relationships were. But, uh, but it started with an image. Once I understood what the story was and, and what would happen sequentially, um, it, it occurred to me as I was kind of looking at the material I had that there was an opportunity to have the structure of the book reflect the narrator's mental state, to, to have it be fragmented in the same way that his view of the world and view of memory and time is fragmented. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it was an early decision, but... Um, but it wasn't kind of one of the first decisions I'd made. I'd thought a lot about the story, and you know, of course, there's a domino effect when you when you have this idea in your head of what the story will be and how it'll flow. When you suddenly have to uh, rearrange everything, and, and, and uh, that it does affect the you know the beats and the choices that you make in the story. So well, the people who are likely to um, to disagree fundamentally with with the book or kind of what it's saying about the war and what we do to, to soldiers. Um, those people are unlikely to read it. Um, you know, if they get a sense of what it's about, they're probably just going to turn to something else. So, you know, that you know, the, the positive outcome of that is that they don't then write me nasty letters. <laughs> It doesn't always add up like that, does it? You know, just because someone hasn't read it doesn't mean they, they don't. No, know. well, that's, that's, yeah. that's true, and people do... People do um, Ask so occasionally at events and things, people will ask me questions, and I think, I think you're thinking of a book that's different from the one that I actually wrote. And if you read it, maybe. So that happens occasionally, but it's not. Uh, no, I mean, generally people, as you say, they take it for what it is, which is a you know an honest attempt to look at these these cons these particular set of concerns uh, through fiction. So um, yeah, I've always been drawn uh, primarily to poems and, and novels. I mean, I, I do like short stories, but the two forms that I find myself reading are, are also the, the forms that I'm most attracted to as a writer, and it's just uh, the, the imagination, I think, is the thing It's the thing that engages me in, in both of those. It's the, the, there is that fictional element or that created element that um, that's really attractive to me. So, no, I mean, I've, I've, I've had to think about it some since, since I wrote it, but, but uh, I never really considered it as an option before that. Uh, part of that is due to the fact that you know I felt like I needed some kind of uh, distance between my own experience and and what I was writing about to be able to think about it in, in a way that would be that would allow me to sort of shape it as 
something that aspired to be art anyway. Um, and, and for me, that just, you know, the imagination provided a significant portion of that distance. I thought that, there, that it would be hopefully cathartic for me, but also for, for people who were interested in engaging with the material. So, um, I mean, one of the great things, again, about, uh, about, about the novel is that it's a participatory endeavor. I mean, the reader has to, has to play their part. So, um, yeah, I am satisfied that, that people have told me that they've appreciated the experience of reading the book. They felt like it's been valuable to them in some way. I mean, as for, for myself, I certainly don't make any claims of arriving at the kind of definitive explanation for, for war and what war does to people, but I do feel like some of the some of the questions that I had are, are in a kind of sharper relief. Um, I think I understand um, what, what, we're, what I'm asking about um, a little bit better, but um, I think the thing, again, the thing that's interesting to me about, about this approach to, to, to dealing with a subject is that you, you aren't getting, you're guaranteed any answers. There isn't necessarily a definitive approach to any of it. Uh, it's the possibility that I find so attractive. and. Um, you know, people have come come to me and talked about different interpretations and different reactions to the book, and and I, I welcome all of those. So it's been it's been a really positive experience for me. Yeah, the book that I'm currently kind of laying the foundations on, um, it does address violence and and how violence um, ultimately seems to always lead to a kind of injustice, and and how individuals and communities respond to and recover from that, how they deal with with the way violence affects them. Um, so that's that's yeah absolutely it's still something that I think about um, you know the the setting and the characters and the story will be very different but I imagine um, I mean it's 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 still an unresolved problem uh, certainly for the world but but also in my own mind I mean it's something that that I'm still really uh, fascinated by and interested in and, and you know I, it's something I want to talk about um, and I don't know I mean I I I hope certainly it's very clear in my own mind that that. I can improve as a writer. I can do more interesting things. I mean, I'm I'm interested in growing and learning and and getting closer to what's in my head when I put it down on the page. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, you know, with this with this Oxfam uh, recognition, it's um, it's great. It's fun. It's kind of affirmation for for the project. I feel like I've just started on. So that's really fantastic.